On the last episode of Hops and Gnarly Brewing, I made a session stout and kegged up my Philly Sour Gingerbread Goza. But that was a couple months ago. Since then, I've been getting ready to scale things up. I got a grain mill and made this little grain storage and milling station complete with locally grown malts from Proximity Malt, my Anvil grain scale, and my girlfriend Meg even made me a dust sleeve to fit the mill. I also got a new brewing system. Today, I'm brewing a Wild American Sour. This is the holy grail for me. The sharp, funky aroma, the initial shock of sour, and the insane complexity. I just love this style. Wild sours are characterized by the yeast and bacteria that produces them. In addition to brewer's yeast, they also contain Britannomyces, Lactobacillus, and Pediococcus. And these funky bugs take a long time to do their work, so today I'm making a big ass batch. I'm stoked to give it a shot. Let's make some beer. The Blickman Brew Easy. Wow. This is the 10 gallon electric version and it's massive compared to what I'm used to. For this beer, I'm using some local spring water and I'm adjusting the water profile using gypsum, calcium chloride, Epsom salt, canning salt, and a little lactic acid. While this step isn't necessarily required to make good beer, it definitely helps, especially if you wanna make something great. The recipe I'm using comes from my trusty copy of American Sour Beers by Michael Tonsmeyer. He calls it Perpetuum Sour and you can also find it on his blog, The Mad Fermentationist. I'll be using some locally grown malts from Proximity Malt and I substituted their malted oats for the flaked oats called for in the recipe. Let's get it going. Keep mashing this in until everything is nice and saturated and holding steady at 156 Fahrenheit or 69 degrees Celsius. Then I want to let the mash bed settle for a few minutes before I start the recirculation. This valve and the diaphragm within it seem to be key to a good mash and I chose the diaphragm marked with a 1. Wort flows from the top kettle to the bottom kettle where it's heated before moving through a pump and back into the top kettle. But the flow from the top kettle to the bottom sets the pace for the whole system. While the mash recirculates, I'm prepping the fermenter. This is the new 14 gallon conical from Anvil called the Crucible. It feels a lot like the Anvil bucket fermenters I'm used to, but a lot bigger and with a big old cone on the bottom. The first thing I did when it arrived is check to see if my low oxygen dry hop setup would fit the lid. Sure enough, this weldless tri-clamp bulkhead fits like a glove. So if I wanted to, I could attach something like this gas post for a blow off valve or really anything with a tri-clamp fitting. But for this batch, an airlock is going to be perfect. You know what else is perfect? Breakfast burritos. Yeah, you, you always make me feel like oh yeah, you. I swear, I spend most of my time on brew days either eating something or cleaning something. Okay, this thing's been mashing for an hour now, time to mash out. 
Once we're up to 168 Fahrenheit or about 75 Celsius, I'll start a 10 minute timer. Cool, time to yank these grains and get our boil started. Holy shit, by the time I cleared the grain, it seemed like the wort was already boiling. Time for our one and only hop edition. The recipe calls for Willamette hops, and I'll be steeping them using a classic hop spider. I accidentally broke one of the arms off this thing, but it almost works even better now. With the hops in the bag, we've got 60 minutes to go. Man, that whirlpool is mesmerizing. We've been spinning this thing for 45 minutes now and it's time to start sanitizing the chiller. 15 minutes to go. And just like that, we're ready to chill this wort down and get things ready for fermentation. As we get close to pitching temperature, I'm using a diffusion stone from Blickman to oxygenate the wort. Sweet, 1054. I'm a little short of my target, but that's gonna work just fine. I'm still learning to use the Blickman Brew Easy, but man, that thing is bad ass. It's already pretty clear, and there's almost no hot or cold break material in there. primary fermentation, I'm going with A20 from Imperial, and I'm also building up a two-stage starter of F08 for the next step. This stuff smells amazing, and I can't believe I just made 10 gallons. Check back next time to see how the Anvil Crucible holds up, and we'll brew another batch. This episode of Hops and Gnarly Brewing was made possible by these awesome partners. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon. Hey, real quick before you go, I just wanna say thanks. I can't believe it, but today marks one year of Hops and Gnarly. To celebrate our first anniversary, we're giving away some Hops and Gnarly merch and maybe even some extras from our partners. To throw your name in the hat, head over to hopsandgnarly.com or click the link in the description.